All right, so we've got the very last section that we're doing this year, 812, which is going to be washer method again. And we're going to revolve it around uh, different kinds of axes. Sometimes it's not even going to be an axis. It's going to be a, a line that's parallel to one of the axes. And then after this, you want to start doing your 8.9 through 8.12 notes. So this is the same stuff we've already kind of done. Uh, this problem right here was example two on eight, nine notes. So go back and watch that again and see how we did example two because we are rotating this thing around the Y axis here, if I remember correctly, and it's this shaded part. So it's a solid object uh, up to here. Okay, that's solid. Uh, up up to this this point right here, and then it's got the open gap here in the middle. There's a parabola in here, a paraboloid that is open, and then all around the outside, it's all it's all filled in, clear down here to the bottom. So it's kind of a kind of a weird little uh, object here with a, like a bowl in the top. So go back and watch eight nine example two. That's that problem that we did in class, and then we're going to do the same function. But now we got a little different uh, twist to this one now. We are not going to do the uh, revolution to the x-axis or the y-axis. Uh, we are going to take this thing and we're going to rotate this thing about the line y equals negative 2. So I'm going to come down here and graph about where the line y equals negative 2 would be. So it looks like to me it's got negative three down there at the bottom, so it's a little closer to the negative three. So the line y equals negative two would be in this area somewhere. And the shaded part, just so we notice, if from the parabola and the, the zero is this, this part right here. So we're gonna take this, this shaded part and we are going to rotate it around, way down past this thing, all the way where it's off the screen, back up so that it's a circle rotating like this. Well, this is what we're rotating it around. So my big R is from the furthest away thing down to here. And you, you may want to make a little rectangle again. We'll help you know that this is a DX problem because this line is parallel to the X axis. So it's DX. So the top function, everything's going to be an X. The top function is that para uh, parabola. So my big R is going to equal the parabola, which is x squared uh, minus 1, which is over there. And then, I can't read that very well. I'm going to move this over so we can see it better. So big R is going to be x squared minus 1, which is this top function, this thing right here, minus what we're rotating around, and that's minus negative 2, because that's y equals negative 2 down here. So your big R, I hope we know minus a negative is plus a positive, so your big R is X squared plus one. That's the big R. The little R part is going to be the open space. So the big R part is going to be the open space, which starts right here at zero and comes down there to negative two. So my little rectangle is right there. It's DX again. My little R is the top function, which is zero minus the bottom function, which is minus negative 2. So my little r is positive 2. So I can now set up my equation. So my integral, remember it's a dx, so it's left to right, so it's still 0 to 1. So we got 0 to 1. And I should have put volume equals, and it's a circle, so it's pi, and it's big R squared. Well, well big R is right here, x squared. So we got x squared plus 1 squared minus little r. Well, little r was 2, and it's minus little r squared dx. So there's my equation. That's the one that's going to give me the volume when I rotate this object around the line y equals negative 2. So I have to, again, simplify my algebra stuff. So i got to square this binomial, so square the first. Take the first times the second times 2, so it's going to be plus 2x squared, square to 1, and then minus the 4. Now, before I do an integral, I'm going to add these two together. And just to save time, instead of writing all this stuff down the exact same way, I'm going to kind of cheat and take 1 minus 4 and get negative 3. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so then what I need to do Did I use the wrong number? Oh, that's a plus one. Okay, my bad. So this is not right. This should have been a plus one. So I'm going to fix it all right now. So this should have been a plus three right here. So that makes this a three, which is going to make this a six, which is going to make this, it would have been nine minus four. So this should have been a plus five. So I because 3 squared is the 9, and then minus the 4, and when you combine those two, you get 5. So I'm glad I caught that, and don't have to fix that later. Okay, so now I'm going to do my integral. So I'm going to keep my pi in the front. I'm going to do a bracket because it's got to be the integral of all this stuff times pi. So this is going to be x to the fifth over 5 plus 6x cubed over 3. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce that to a 2. And then plus a 5x, and that's from 0 to 1. So I'm going to plug in my 1. So 1 to the 5th over 5. Okay, that's just 1 5th. Plus 2 times 1 to the 3rd, which is just going to be 2. Plus 5 times 1, which is just 5. And then I stick zeros in here, and zeros divided by any number is 0. So now I'm going to add all these together. So that's what? 7 and 1 fifth pi, which is also 7.2 pi, which we could also write as uh, 36 fifths pi. So any one of those, uh, any one of those is fine. Okay. So that's number two. And we got our very last problem of the notes for the year. We got the exact same graph of the exact same function over here. So again, the shaded part, there it is. This is the shaded part that's the intersection of all those things. And now we're going to rotate that thing about the line x equals 2. Well, if you remember, this is x equals 1, so I'm going to come out here to about where 2 is. We're going to call 2 right there. So I'm going to draw a vertical line. I really don't need to go lower because I'm just rotating it this way, but I'm going to go ahead and go on down. Okay, so now my big R again is the furthest away function over to the red line. Now there's two things I should have pointed out here. This is parallel to y, so I know this is a dy problem. So all of my stuff has to be in terms of y. And again, if you make a little rectangle here, since it's a vertical rectangle, this is dy here. And so big R is going to be the right value, which is 2, minus the far left value, which is 0. So my big R is 2. Little r is going to be the open space. So little r is going to be from here over to the red line. That's the open space. That's little r right there. I should probably put a big R and I probably should have labeled those all the time. But little r is going to be the right minus the left. So little r is 1. Okay. So those are my big R and little r. Oh, and this only works to, let me get black. This part only works to right here. Okay, so this is circling around this way, but it's solid. I'm sorry, it's a solid one to here. Now, the, if you look up here, we got a new big R because the big R is no longer this zero. This left, the left side is no longer zero. It's this part of the function right here. And remember, dy is what we need, so I need to, again, just like I did on example two, I need to solve this, this function right here for x. So I subtract one, and then I square root it. And because this is on the right side of the y-axis, that's the positive part. So that is going to be my big R is now a new big R, because we got two parts. We got this big R. Okay, that, that big R, 
is going to be the right, which is 2, minus the square root of y minus 1. Little r is still the opening right here. So the little r for this part is still, is still the uh, red minus the 1, 2 minus 1. This little r for that other part is still the same thing. The open part never changes. It's 2 to 1 the entire time. Okay, so we are going to uh, do this, this uh, problem as two parts because we've got a solid disk down here at the bottom till it gets to one. There's no, well, I, I, I'm, I'm mistaken. There is also an open circle right here in this one. So it's kind of like a donut down here at the bottom, but then it's a weird donut because it starts getting closer. Okay, so we're going to do bottom to top. So zero to one is the solid, uh, solid part of this minus that. So the volume of the bottom part with just the donut hole in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and put this all together, even though I didn't before. So volume is going to be the volume of one plus the volume of two. Two is going to be the top part where this thing changes all the way. But the volume is going to be the integral from zero to one. I need a pi out here because I got a circle. And then I'm doing just this bottom part to here. I'm stopping right here, this part. Okay? So 0 to 1, this part, which big R is 2. Big R is 2 the whole way. So I got 2 squared minus this little r is that, that 1 right there, the purple 1, minus 1 squared. And that's a dy. And it's going to be plus the integral from 1 to 2. Because now I've got a new thing on the far left. So that new thing on the far left is this part. So this is going to be 2 minus the square root of y minus 1. That's big R. And I might need to make that a little better. Squared minus the little r is still red minus uh, 2 minus the 1. So this is still minus 1 squared dy. So this, again, everything's in terms of y now. So we got to take these two parts and put them all together. So this is going to be pi. I'm going to simplify this in here. This is 4 minus 1. So this is the integral from 0 to 1 of 3 dy plus, now this part's kind of ugly. Or this is a binomial square. So it's going to be the integral from 1. Oop, I left the pi off there. I'm going to have pi for both because they're both circles. So I still got a pi here. Okay, and then this is going to be uh, 2 squared is 4. And then 2 times this times 2 is minus 4 radical y minus 1. So it's going to be a little bit nastier doing an integral for that. And then I'm going to square this part, which is a positive, because negative squared is positive, and take that out as y minus 1. And oops, don't need to print C yet. And then it's minus this, this thing squared minus 1 squared, which is 1 dy. So I'm going to combine all these like terms. I'm going to go ahead and do the integral of this part. So this is going to be a pi in the front. And then I got 3y from 0 to 1 plus I got a pi in front. I'm going to add all these like terms. So 4 minus 1 minus 1, that's going to be 2. Okay, so I got a 2 here. And then I still got a minus 4 radical 1 minus y, and then I got a plus y out here, dy. So now I'm going to do the integral of all these parts right in here. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and plug in this upper and lower bound for this part. So this is pi, and then I get plug in a 1, and I get 3 minus 0. Okay. Uh, plug in 1 in there gives you 3 times 1 is 3, 0 in there, 3 times 0 is 0, plus I still got this pi. And then I'm going to do the integral of this side. So the integral of 2 is 2y. Now this is a u substitution problem right here. I need to think, and I'm going to actually change this right here to save some time. I need to think of this as being y to the 1 half power, okay, instead of a radical because we're doing an integral. And I'm supposed to do u equals y minus 1. So du, oops, du, with respect to y, is equal to 1 dy. So u is y minus 1, so I am 
I am actually thinking about this as u to the one half, the integral of u to the one half du, which is going to be add one to this power, which is two over two. So this is u to the three halves over three halves. Would you flip that upside down? It's that deal right there. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to move that in there. It's a, that minus four is a coefficient, so it doesn't change. And then this is times this two thirds u, two thirds u to the three halves. Okay, but instead of u, I want to keep this in terms of y. So I'm going to stick y minus one back in here to the three halves power. Okay, and I'm going to get this out of the way because I got to keep going a little bit. And that's the end of this part. And then this is plus the add one to one is y squared over two. And that is from one to two still, this integral. So over here, I got a three pi. And then I got plus. And then I'm going to plug in two first. So this is going to, I'm going to have a pi here. And I'm going to get uh, two. Now let's go on that down. Two times two minus eight thirds. And then I'm going to have two. Uh, minus one to the three halves. Okay, I got eight thirds from these multiplying these coefficients together, in case you weren't sure. And then I got a two squared over two, and then minus, I got plug ones in here. So uh, two times one is two, minus, uh, look, I plug one in here. One minus one makes this zero, and zero times anything is zero, so that's a zero. And then plugging one in here, one squared, over two is plus one half, and then bracket. Okay, so this problem's taking a little while because you got a complex deal up there in your picture. And then we got plus, and now we're gonna start simplifying here. So let's see, we got uh, two minus one is one. This whole thing is one, and one to any power is one. So this is all one. And so we got four, and one times negative eight thirds is negative eight thirds. Over here, we got uh, 4 over 2, which is plus 2. And then we got minus uh, 2 minus 0 is 2, plus a half is 2 halves, 2 and a half, which I'm going to write as 5 halves. You can leave it 2 and a half if you wish. And now I'm going to simplify all this uh, mess in here. So let's see what we get here. So let's see. We're going to have 3 pi plus a pi, and I could move that pi to the end. 4 plus 2 is 6. And uh, let's combine the, let's get common denominators of six. So let's see, this six would be two over two. This is 16, six. Okay, and then this with the six in the bottom is 15, six. And they're both negative. So it looks like this is negative 31, six. Okay. And this would be 36, six. All right, so we got three pi. And we got plus, and this is 36, 6, minus 31, 6. Get a common denominator. Now you got a pi, I'm going to stick it on the back of this. So this is 3 pi plus, let's see, 36 minus 1 is 5, 6 pi. So this would be 3 and 5, 6 pi. Or you can write it's an improper fraction, however you want to do it. So pretty hard problem, a lot of work. We're done with all the new notes. Anything you got questions on, email me. Uh, any examples you want to see, email them to me, and I'll try to make a video of them. Uh, we're going to start getting ready for the test now, so good luck. Bye.